Hi there. My name is Zaina Pouncey. I'm the School Programs Coordinator at the Atlanta Botanical Garden. Thanks for joining me today. I'm here in our tropical rotunda to share with you how the Atlanta Botanical Garden is able to grow an entire rainforest indoors in the heart of the city. Today we'll explore how we use greenhouses to grow exotic plants from around the world and we'll design our own greenhouse to see what plants you can grow at home. So let's get started. The Atlanta Botanical Garden is home to thousands of different plant species, many of which are from different parts of the world. From the deserts of Africa to the rainforest of South America. When you're here, you can explore the diversity of plant species from habitats that are thousands of miles away. But the question remains, how can we grow plants from around the world indoors? Well, we know that plants need soil, sunlight, water, and air to survive. But those needs may vary depending on the habitat where a plant is from. So how do we replicate the environment of a plant from another country? Well, that is where our greenhouses come in handy. A greenhouse is a structure made of clear material where plants can be grown inside. A greenhouse can be as big as a building or as small as a shoebox. At the Atlanta Botanical Garden, we have several greenhouses where we can cultivate our plant collection. The benefit of a greenhouse is that it provides a controlled environment where you can decide how much sunlight, water, air, and soil plants receive. You can also control the temperature, making it warmer or cooler based on your plant's needs. This allows us to grow a variety of plants from different ecosystems around the world, like the exotic ant plant, which is native to Southeast Asia. And hundreds of different species of tropical orchids. including the vanilla orchid vine, which is native to the warm climates of Mexico and Madagascar. We even grow the cacao tree, the tree that is used to make chocolate and is native to the tropical rainforest of South America and Africa. This warm environment created by the greenhouse helps us to grow plants from hot climates like the tropical rainforest and desert. We imitate the humid environment of a rainforest by using misters that release water on a timer so plants stay hydrated and moist. Our greenhouses also have fans and vents that further allow us to control the temperature in case it gets too hot. We can also keep the air circulated to keep our environment dry and arid like in a desert. Greenhouses are so effective because they create their own microclimate or a climate that differs from the conditions of the surrounding area. You may have experienced this sensation when getting into a car that's been sitting in the sun on a hot summer day. The inside of the car is much warmer than outside because the heat from the sun enters through the windows and is trapped inside, raising the car's internal temperature. A greenhouse works in a similar way. It lets in the sun's rays, which provide light and heat to the plants inside. The plants absorb some of the sunlight and use photosynthesis to convert the light into energy they need to grow. The sun's rays that are not absorbed by the plants reflect off the floor of the greenhouse and travel back towards the sky, releasing heat as it does so. The plants also give off small amounts of heat during cellular respiration as they release oxygen. 
This heat rises, but it is contained inside the greenhouse, since it has no way to escape. This keeps the greenhouse insulated and warm. Whenever you walk through our tropical rotunda, desert house, or orchid center, you can think of it as walking through a greenhouse. Now that we've learned more about greenhouses and how we use them at the Atlanta Botanical Garden, your STEM challenge is to design a greenhouse of your own to use in your classroom or at home. I'll show you how to get started, but this is your project, so feel free to experiment with any materials you may have on hand. Let's get started. To make your own greenhouse, you'll need the following materials. An empty, cleaned, clear container. We used a strawberry bin, but you can also recycle an empty milk jug or soda liter or a used takeout container, as long as it's cleaned and the sides are clear so sunlight can penetrate. You'll need soil or dirt but make sure to get permission before digging outside. You'll also need seeds. We used wheatgrass, but you could use any of your favorite seeds or seeds in your kitchen, like dried beans. Lastly, you may want a few small pots, something like a cleaned yogurt container or even paper or plastic cups would work just fine. But this step is optional. You can also just place your soil directly into your container. To assemble your greenhouse, step one is put soil in your pots. If you're not using small cups or pots, you can just place your soil directly into your clear container and skip to step three. Step two is place your pots filled with soil into the bottom of your clear container. Step three is plant your seeds. Step four is carefully water your seeds and soil. Finally, find a sunny spot for your greenhouse and close the container lid. Over time, you may start to notice your greenhouse becoming foggy or see water droplets form on the clear surfaces. This is good and a sign that your greenhouse is trapping heat and the plants are releasing oxygen and moisture. Similar to if you breathe on a cold window in winter and see your breath fog the glass, the plants inside your greenhouse are also breathing and releasing moisture that gets trapped on the surface of your greenhouse. Over time, track the growth of your seedlings. Take pictures or measurements each week and document their growth. Thanks for participating in this STEM challenge. We can't wait to see what you come up with. If you'd like to share your creations with us, you can tag us at ATL Botanical hashtag STEM challenge. Until next time, bye.